Sputnik's Guide to Life on Earth by Frank Cottrell Boyce. We're on to chapter seven, uh, video six. That might be confusing now because the chapters, chapter numbers and the video numbers don't match up. Uh, I've never read you the subtitle, which is Can a dog from outer space save the world? That dog being Sputnik, or maybe he's an alien, or maybe he's a boy because he has different appearances to different people. Um, the previous chapter, we left Prez floating in a gravity-defying shed where he'd fallen asleep. He then woke up and Sputnik had disappeared. Chapter 7, which is called One kilogram of plain flour, one tub of margarine, 500 grams mushrooms. I checked that we were back on the ground before opening the shed door. The air was fresh and cool, which made me realise I really needed the toilet. Come on, Sputnik, let's go in. Mm, no sign of him in the yard, or the lane, or the field. He was gone. Maybe he was upset that I told him off for introducing deadly weapons to the birthday party. The tree was standing tall. <laughs> in fact, it looked as though it had always been there. Maybe the tree falling down had been a dream? Hmm. Surely the floating shed had been a dream. As if, gravity, as if a gravity eddy could ever be a thing. Maybe I didn't need to save the world after all. Whew. Phew. I opened the kitchen door. There he is! He's here, everyone! Look! Phew! Prez, you scared us. We thought you'd run off. Uh, she thought you'd run away with Sputnik. Where were you? Your bed wasn't slept in. He stepped in the shed. I saw him come out. He stepped in the shed with Sputnik. Well, you're here now, thank the Lord. But please don't sleep in the shed again. If word got out that you were sleeping in the shed, they'd, they'd come and take you away as soon as... Look! Look at that! What? The tree, it's back up. Where's Sputnik? I called, the, uh, I called the forestry last night. I never expected them to get it done so quickly. I don't get it. The tree fell down. How can it be up? That's amazing. I didn't hear a thing, did you? Where's Sputnik? But, but how can a tree be down if it was uh, up, if it was down? Hmm, uh, it was uprooted. I suppose maybe they rerooted it. Has anyone seen Sputnik? How can a tree... He isn't in the shed. Who isn't? I'm getting all my voices muddled up now. I'll show you the page here. It's just got a whole series of uh, speeches and you have to kind of guess who's talking. I'm trying to keep all my voices together. I don't know if you noticed, I'm trying to do... A, this is definitely happening in Scotland and if I did everyone with a Scottish accent, I think it'd be confusing. So the dad's got the low voice, the mum has got the Scottish voice, the two kids... Um, have got kind of Englishy, Scottishy voices and Prez, I think, anyway, I know, it's a bit confusing, anyway. Oh, this is serious, this is bad, this is very bad. The dad walked up and down and bit his lip, oh, and talked for a long time about how bad, bad, bad it was that a strange dog was loose somewhere on the farm. I thought I, I brought the cows in for milking this morning, said the mum. They didn't seem unusually agitated, and the chickens are fine. Actually, the big red one is missing, said Ray. Well, that's because I killed it, said the mum, for Sunday dinner. Oh. <laughs> um, so he's not bothering any of our animals. Well, that's good, said the dad, but then I don't, no, 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 that's bad. It, it, if he's not bothering our animals, maybe he's bothering someone else's. Maybe he's worrying Dougie's sheep, or maybe he's down at the caravan side. Oh, he could be creating all kinds of havoc down there. I wanted to tell them that they didn't have to worry about things like that with Sputnik. But how could I say, calm down, he's not a dog, he's a wee alien in a kilt and goggles. The mum was at the computer. Okay, first thing we do, she said, is Facebook everyone to keep an eye out for him. 
Uh, put him on the farms for him too. Now, has anyone got a photo we can post? They all went through the photos on their phones. They had pictures of the party. The cake, the fallen tree. So there we know it's not a dream. Um, sorry, that was me talking, not Frank Cottrell voice. But, but no one had a picture of Spudnik. I know I took pictures of him, that's weird. Um, never mind, we can just describe him. Uh, what would you say? Black and white mongrel, mostly collie dog, pleasant temperament. Collie? He's more of a Labrador, surely. I thought he was mostly Spaniel. He looks like a Spaniel. What are you talking about? Spaniels are tiny. Sputnik's a big dog, like a, like a lurch across. Yeah, yeah, um, he's at least three quarters Alsatian. What do you mean, black and white? He's brown. Now, here's a picture of all those kind of different dogs they're describing. Can you see how they're all completely different? And that one there is how Prez sees Sputnik, but all of these are the other dogs that the other members of the family see. Uh, I can't see Alsatian in him. He's more of a retriever or a springer type of something uh, with that lovely golden coat of his. Alsatian, literature, Labrador. So, when I look at Sputnik, I see a wee lad in flying goggles and a kilt with a yellow rucksack. And when the Blythes looked at Sputnik, they saw a dog. But every Blythe saw a different dog. How can you organise a search for someone you can't describe? They were all still shouting the names of breeds of dogs at each other when I heard the doorbell go, just like it did on the night he arrived. Is that the doorbell? said Ray. We don't have a doorbell, said the mum. Oh yeah. They all carried on talking over each other. I answered the door. I knew who it was. There's only one person on earth who carries his own doorbell around with him. I love that idea. I think I need a doorbell in my pocket too. <laughs> Sputnik went straight past me, carrying a shopping bag. Did you miss me? I was worried about you. I left a message for you outside the shed. Didn't, uh, didn't you tell them? I didn't see a message. You don't see messages, you smell them. Oh, <laughs> and then I realised what he was talking about. When dogs pee on lampposts and gateposts, that's their way of communicating. Other dogs come along and sniff the wee and then they know whose territory it is or whatever. Exactly, I was told the most popular form of communication on the planet was urine. For dogs, not people. So you didn't get the message? No, I didn't. I don't speak pee. <laughs> I was worried that you'd, run, that you'd run away because the planet was going to be destroyed. Oh, this planet is not going to be destroyed. Sputnik and Prez are unbeatable. We will save this planet. Probably. Mm, possibly. Mm. Look, you told me to be good. I've been good. The Sputnik is a creature as good as his word. I fixed the tree and now I've done this. They're going to love it. He swung into the kitchen, waltzed up to the mum and handed her a newspaper. Oh, you've brought me a newspaper. I thought only dogs did that in cartoons. What a clever, clever dog you are. And she scratched him behind the ear. He must have gone all the way down to Dimitri's shop on the caravan site. Sputnik winked at me. That is uh, clever, said the dad. I'm, I'm still not happy about him just wandering off, though. You two were supposed to be responsible. He gave me and Jesse a hard stare. Hmm. Then Sputnik plonked his shopping bag down in front of him. The dad looked inside. W what's here? He said, oh, a bag of plain flour, a tub of margarine, mushrooms. This is everything that was on my shopping list. He looked at the fridge door, where the shopping list should have been. It wasn't there. It was stuck to the top of the margarine tub. Right, said the dad. Uh, 
I'll cook a chicken and mushroom pie then. Uh, nice work, Sputnik. Come on, said Ray. Sputnik couldn't have done that. One of you two did it, really. You're playing... Uh, you're playing a trick on us. You took him to the shop and did the shopping. Not me, said Jessie. I thought he was missing. Prez then, said Ray. I didn't even know where there was a sh I didn't even know there was a shop on the caravan site. I didn't even know the way to the caravan site. Well, just a very, very clever dog, said the mum. With a bank account, said Ray. Everyone looked at him. Or well, how did he pay for it all? Well, that's a wee puzzle, said the mum, uh, which I'm sure Prez will solve for us when he's ready. Meanwhile, I'm sure we're all glad that Sputnik is making himself useful. No problem, Sputnik smiled. He shook hands with everyone again. Whenever he shook hands with them, they all forgot to be worried or puzzled about anything. They just loved those handshakes. But when he came to shake my hand, I thought, hmm, how did you pay for it? He just winked. Chapter 8 milk. I didn't want to think about how Sputnik might have got those groceries. I just thought, oh, the sooner I save this planet, the better. I didn't have Grandad to help me, but I did have his map. He'd drawn it himself in blue ink and written all the places, the place names in lovely slanty handwriting, then drawn a fancy compass in the top right hand corner, an inaccurate dolphin in the bottom left, with a scroll um, that said, the, the travels of Prez and his granddad, written on it, unfurling across the top. Then he'd roll it up and tied it uh, with a ribbon. It really was like a proper pirate map. Oh, this is me talking that, sorry. not that. I, wouldn't that be lovely to have your own map like that? You could make one. And it could be all the things that are special to you. Anyway, sorry, I need to make a map tonight. When I unrolled it, it smelt of our flat and tracaire gardens. I looked at all the places I'd seen and somehow forgotten. Shangri-La, Pisa, Murmansk. I googled them on Ray's computer. It made me feel better. They were all amazing. In Murmansk, there were giant ships with factory-sized icebergs floating past them. Huge walruses lolled about, their tusks as big as me. Up the Amazon, giant snakes hung from the branches of trees. The white domes of lost cities rose out of the jungles. I decided to make a list. Number one, the Amazon. Number two, the Great Pyramid, Egypt. Number three, a different Great Pyramid, Mexico. Number four, the Taj Mahal, India. Number five, Murmansk, Russia. Number six, Shangri-La. Hmm. I didn't notice Ray looking over my shoulder until he said, the Amazon? You've been up the Amazon? According to the map I had. And Shangri-La, really? I thought Shangri-La was a made up place. I thought it was a mythical kingdom in the Himalayas. Ah, well, that explained why Grandad didn't want to end up there. Who'd want to end up in somewhere mythical? The Taj Mahal. You've seen the Taj Mahal. Dairy farmers never go anywhere. If they went to the Taj Mahal, um, if we went to the Taj Mahal, we'd have to take the cows with us. Every summer, everyone else in my class goes off to Spain or Florida or Blackpool or wherever. And we're stuck in Stramodi making hay. You know what our holiday is, Prez? When the temporary kid comes to stay with us. You are the holiday. Be a good holiday, eh? Bring me sunshine. He stepped into his boots and headed outside. Hmm. I hadn't thought about the fact that there had been other temporary kids before me. I wondered who they were and did they all get the top bunk? Were some of them more fun than me? From the bedroom window, I could see Ray starting to help his dad fix the fence where the tree had crashed into it. The dad was driving a thing like a miniature digger. 
Ray was piling the bits into the scoop. I was about to go down and make myself useful when Sputnik bounced in. Ready to save our little world? You're not allowed indoors except the kitchen. Then let's go. Is, is this the ten things worth seeing? That's it. Uh, what, what's that? Is it far? Ah, oh, it's the most beautiful building. Ah, uh, stop right there. Buildings do not count. What? Buildings are nothing but architecture. I'm not interested in architecture. Not human architecture, anyway. Humans can't build for toffee. Oh. Panic exploded in my brain like popcorn. What was I supposed to do now? Nearly all the wonders of the world were human architecture. What, what other kinds of architecture are there? Bee architecture. Have you ever been inside a beehive? Wow, now that is architecture. Hexagonal combs running with honey, light and the sound. Hundreds of bees working away. Prawns and, and the like, they build too. Coral reefs, they build them out of their own bodies. Hmm. So, the Taj Mahal, hmm. I don't like the sound of it. What do you like the sound of? This is serious. I'm trying to save the planet here. He clutched his ears and yelled, Arr! Well, I don't like the sound of that for a start. Make it stop. As if he was in pain. For a second, I thought the world was ending there and then. What's happen happening? Are you, are you okay? What, what's wrong? Can't you hear that? It's like someone drilling in my eardrums. What is it? A, a whistle. Can't you hear? It must be around mm, 53 kilohertz. I looked out of the window. Jessie was in the yard holding a dog leash and blowing into a little silver whistle. Ah, oh, it's Jessie. I think she's got a dog whistle. I'll soon put a stop to that. Sputnik opened his backpack. The room was suddenly filled with a hot, fireworky smell. He pulled out a pistol, a real pistol. It looked like something from Pirates of the Caribbean, heavy with a big brass hammer at the back and a silver trigger and a wooden handle. Whoa, stop. I'll shoot over her head just to frighten her. No, 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 no. Oh, wait, no, oh, no. Oh, no. My days. That's how you go. Oh, no. Sorry, this is Prez talking now. Actually, I should just go back a second. Do you know about dog whistles? So dogs can hear things way higher than us. So a dog whistle to us sounds silent, but it's actually a really super high shrill sound that dogs can hear because they've got way superior hearing. Anyway, I just thought I'd make sure you know that. Um, so this is now prayers. My days. That's how you got the shopping this morning, isn't it? You pulled a gun in Dimitri's shop. Guns are so useful when you want stuff without paying for it. He was at the window. He was aiming at Jessie. No, 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 stop. Definitely stop. She's the one who needs to stop. Then, then we'll go down and, and stop her with good manners, not with guns. Even when we got right up to Jessie, I still couldn't hear the whistle. Just a faint thumping sound. When she saw us coming, she took it out of her mouth. Sputnik said, Thank the lucky, uh, thank the stars for that. Then the thumping stopped. And I realised that it had been the whistle. Uh, it hadn't been the whistle at all. It was my heart worrying about him pulling a gun. ba boom ba boom ba boom ba boom Ray, Ray came over to look at the whistle. We got that in the feed store, remember? We used to use it in the game. Dogs of the future, I love that game. Don't talk about it in front of the temporary kid, it's embarrassing. And don't talk about the temporary kid in front of the temporary kid. Maybe he doesn't talk, but he does have ears. Hi, Prez. Um, hi, P um, oh, I got that the wrong way around. I thought that was Jesse talking. Gosh, sorry, another mistake. So that was Ray talking. Hi, Prez. Jessie smiled. She dived, on, uh, she dived on Sputnik, fixing an old 
looking collar around his neck. The leather was all cracked and it had a little brass medal attached to it, which had been worn smooth. What do you think? I love it, said Sputnik. Is it a local custom? I love local customs. It's a local custom if you're a dog. You're not a dog. Who cares about the species? It's the thought that counts. But while he was talking, Jessie had clipped a leash to the collar and now she started dragging him down the lane towards the cow pasture. Sputnik was disgusted. What, what, what's she doing? Where is she? Ow, she's dragging me. Does she think I'm her luggage? Come on, Sputnik, thrilled Jessie. Walkies! And there's a picture of Sputnik being pulled by Jessie. Jessie. I suppose she'd be called in Scottish. Jessie. So I'm going to finish at the next opportunity because I've already been reading for 20 minutes. So we're halfway through chapter 8. So now I'm going to be stopping in the middle of chapters. Sorry. Walkies, are you nuts? We've got a planet to save. Tell her. How can I tell her? What would I say? Your dog is not a dog. And by the way, an extraterrestrial demolition gang is going to come and knock your planet down very soon. So could you unclip the leash, please? That about sums it up. Ow, she keeps pulling. If I said that, they'd have me back in the temporary and it wouldn't be temporary anymore. Sit, Sputnik, sit, said Jessie, pointing at the ground. I'll sit when you bring me a chair, said Sputnik. I'm not sitting here, it's covered in mud. Sit. Yes, um, I'll sit when we find something hygienic to sit on. They called the long lane running down to the farm the Loaning. Sputnik trotted off down it. Some of the cows looked up as he passed. Sputnik nodded. Uh, Sputnik stopped. Sorry. <laughs> Stop. Sputnik stopped. He stared. What are they? Cows. Cows, said Sputnik, rolling the, the word around his mouth like a new flavour. Stay said Jessie, crouching down in front of Sputnik. Sputnik, stay. She held a finger up to his face. Stay, stay, stay. I think you've made yourself fairly clear, said Sputnik. You want me to stay here, is that right? Good boy. Very slowly, she undid the leash and walked away from him backwards. Good boy, good Sputnik. So, cows. Sputnik hissed out of the corner of his mouth. Are they edible? No. They smell edible. Well, I mean, you can eat them, but first they have to be great. I'm starving. He didn't wait for me to finish. He was just gone. Sputnik! Yelled Jesse. Come here, boy. Come here, Sputnik. But Sputnik wasn't coming here. Sputnik hurled himself over the fence, straight into the middle of the herd of cows. What was he going to do? Bite a cow? <laughs> I think I'll leave it there. That's a bit of a cliffhanger. What do you think he's going to do? He is rather obsessed with food, isn't he, Sputnik? And, um, I mean, it's true, cows are food, but mm, normally when they're a beef burger. Um, Sorry, I don't think we'll get into a conversation about meat here. But anyway, I'm going to pause there on page 85. Um, sorry to stop in the middle of a chapter, but I think that's a cliffhanger. And that's where we'll leave it today. Uh, I hope you're enjoying it. I can't wait to find out what's going to happen next in this crazy story. Uh, and what naughty things that Sputnik is going to do, because he's constantly getting himself and Perez into trouble. We'll find out. Bye.